So what we're going to do is we're here to expose it, let people tell their story, and let them, let everybody in the public see the horrors of the court system in Suffolk County, New York. Dr. Carlos Rivera, pediatrician, got divorced and ended up paying $15,000 a month to his ex. After paying $492,000 in four years, he still ended up having to go to jail for six months. Dr. Rivera has been forced into early retirement from his beloved profession due to finances and severe depression. He's been alienated from two of his children. He's been left with nothing. Yet, this isn't enough. His ex still wants him behind bars. Again, even his ex's boyfriend thinks this is wrong. I actually believe parents, fathers get fucked in court big time. So how is this happening? How is the system allowing this to go on? In this Long Island Backstory special report, we'll investigate who is to blame for destroying a productive member of society just for getting a divorce. Long Island Backstory with Chief Correspondent Gary Jacobs. Sean, we got information that you got an order of protection for abusing your handicapped child. Is that true? <laughs> you like to comment on it? Catherine, what is it that you expect to get out of Carlos here today? Sean calls him a, Sean calls him a deadbeat. He paid over $100,000. You call that a deadbeat? What is it that you want to have to happen today? Sean, can you stop pushing me, please? I'm not pushing. You just have to be careful when you walk. Hi, I'm Gary Jacobs. Welcome to another edition of Long Island Backstory, where we're here at Suffolk County Supreme Court in Central Islip. Uh, we're here in front of Judge Cheryl Joseph's courtroom for the Dr. Rivera case. Today is August 22nd, 2016, and we have no idea what's going to happen today. This judge just be, seems to be throwing curveballs every time we're here, but uh, hopefully it, it'll go well, and we just keep wake, hoping that the uh, judge, I guess, uh, finds Jesus and does the right thing, or you know, and, and changes the way she's been acting. Uh, we've been got a lot of a lot of emails. This show has been shared thousands of times all over the world, and we're getting a lot of emails, text messages, and Facebook messages commenting on Dr. Rivera's ex-wife, Catherine, and her new boyfriend, Sean Laird. One of the things that keeps uh, coming up is many people are asking, why is it that we focus on Sean Laird? Well, there's a couple of reasons. First of all, he's encouraging her to do this. You know, somebody who wants to be abusive, they can't do it on their own. They, they need accomplices. Of course, they have Judge Cheryl Joseph as, as an accomplice, and the whole system is stacked against him. But you know what? She has her family. She has her sister who's here to support her, and she has her new boyfriend, Sean Laird. And of course, he has a vested interest because uh, upon information and belief and, and messages that we've got, Sean Laird is in some serious financial problems. He owes tens of thousands of dollars in debt. He's lost According to his uh, LinkedIn page, he's had several several different jobs. And now, shockingly, what really is worrying Dr. Rivera is that his children are living with somebody who we believe uh, is possibly an abuser. Uh, we just got another message last week that says that Sean Laird got an order of protection against him for abusing his handicapped child. I mean, this is not the kind of person that you want to have uh, around, around your children. Another thing is he makes allegations about Dr. Rivera that it was horrible that he had an affair, yet the information that, that we've received is that while he was uh, dating Dr. Rivera's ex-wife, he was still with his, for his, his wife at the time, plus with his girlfriend. So he was cheating on all three of them. So this man is not some pure, uh, wonderful, clean guy. He's also made several threats to Dr. Rivera. And you know, it's funny, when we're in the court, when we're walking through the court, he runs away from us and tries to hide. Yet when he's on Facebook, he makes comments about people being Facebook bullies. When he's in the courtroom, he'll turn around and make comments, but he never wants to do anything on, uh, on camera. You know, he tries to hide his face. And you know what, we're gonna show some footage now of the last court date, how they try to hide from our cameras.
for the safety. I don't think she was home at the time. The woman who, um... So as you can see by the, uh, by the footage, what do they have to hide? Let me tell you, Dr. Vera holds his head up high. The man didn't do anything wrong except for try to be a loving father. He's the victim here. If these people are victims, why are they trying to hide behind this big gold, gold pocketbook? Stand out and be proud. Hold your head up high that you're doing the right thing, but they're, they're not doing the right thing. So let's go in the courtroom and uh, we'll see what happens and we'll catch you on the way out. Catherine, are you aware that while, uh, while you were starting to date Sean that he was still with his ex-wife? And also still with his previous girlfriend. Do you know anything about that? Sean, you like, you like to comment on Facebook. You tell everybody that we're Facebook bullies. Why don't you comment right out, out here? If you want to be a bully, you can come outside with me and put the camera down. Are you threatening me to come no, outside no. with you? What, you, what does that mean? You threaten other people on Facebook? I'll come outside. We'll come outside and you can talk okay, to the camera. Let's camera. go. We can talk to you and I. Well, you what, are you, what, are you, what are you ashamed of? You're putting pocket I'm not, books in front I'm of your face? I'm not ashamed of anything. Is that true that you, that you removed from the police force it, for abusing a handicapped not, child? Not true at all. Is it? Is it is that true? I think, I, I think it's you who's asking. I'm, I'm asking you the questions. Answer the questions. So why you? I don't have to answer the questions. And so neither, you're. Is that, neither do I. Is that, no, you don't have to. But is that is that true that while you were sleeping with Miss Rivera, you were still with your ex-wife at the same time, and you were also still with another girlfriend? <laughs> So it's not true that it's not true that you abuse your handicapped child. Is that is that why you were removed from the police? Do you want to make do you want to make some comments outside? You want to make some comments outside? We'll meet you downstairs. Okay, so so punch me in my okay, face and get it over with, difference. because you like to threaten. Okay, we have uh, with us uh, Judith Powell, uh, Dr. Rivera's attorney, who's representing him pro bono. And from what I was sitting in the courtroom, it really seems like this judge just had an attitude. I mean, honestly, she, her facial movements and actually some of the stuff she was saying was, re was ridiculous. I'm not an attorney, but I mean, I read some of the papers and where it was saying that, uh, you know, it didn't meet the financial uh, the standards and that he can't get poor man status. Well, the federal government already deemed that Dr. Rivera is poor. He's homeless. He's living on his uncle's couch. He doesn't have a job. He's on Medicaid. The federal government and says it's okay. But this judge, she knows better. She's a Supreme Court judge. She knows better and she says that's not convincing. It's not convincing. What the hell is this woman talking about, Judy? I've done poor person status before. I've never submitted a net worth. And in every other case I've ever done poor person status, which isn't a lot, I don't do it often, they've always gotten it. I don't know why she said I need a net worth. But if I do need one, why did she dismiss it with prejudice? But what would be the harm to say, you know what, I'm not sure and I don't want to make a mistake, Mrs. Powell, so do me a favor, submit the net worth and I'll reserve my judgment. Couldn't she have done that? Well, she could have dismissed it without prejudice. I don't understand why she submitted it. I said, well, is this with prejudice or without prejudice? And she said, with prejudice. That means you can't resubmit it. Without prejudice means I could start all over again. So um, we have a, a man who may lose his freedom, basically have a quasi-criminal consequence, who has no money, and now somehow we have to figure out how to defend him, and it's, it's, it's a problem. We have to now order a transcript, but he doesn't have the money to order the transcript. Uh, I have to get out subpoenas. There are fees, process servers, and he doesn't have the money to pay for that either. Why would the judge not want to Give him the benefit of the doubt and give him poor man's status. Why, why is that? I never had it denied before, so I really don't understand. It's not coming out of the judge's pocket. I, like I said, I don't. Un I'm confused. I'm also confused with her decision on the um, Child Support Standards Act, where she just said, uh, ba basically said, I don't find for you, but she never explained why. And 
And, and I read the motion, and you because you you submitted it, and we and we looked at it, and it was black and white. You, I mean, you spelled out exactly why it doesn't conform. You gave case law why it doesn't conform. How could she say? It? I mean, it's black and white, unless she's saying you're a liar. I don't know. I don't understand it because normally, if a judge is going to make a ruling on something so big as that. They're going to give you some sort of explanation, or they're going to put the ruling in writing. I don't know why she didn't do that. I well, my, from my experience, she did that, so you can't appeal it, because now it's an order from the bench. Is that not appealable now? I'm really, I really don't know. I'm not an appellate attorney. We'll, we are going to look into uh, appealing. Again, it was, I don't have a written order, so that is confusing. I am going to order the transcripts. I guess I'll just pay for it myself. I don't know what else to do, and um, see what we can do. And um, my experience has been on contempt that the appellate division will appoint appellate counsel because it is quasi-criminal, because you can get criminal sanctions, go to jail for six months, which is longer in jail than <laughs> this bee likes us, longer in jail than, uh, you know, a lot of bad criminals get. So I, I'm confused. I don't know why she did what she did. And it seemed to me, you know, just as a lay person, I think everybody else said that the judge was trying to bully you to agree to go forward with the trial when you were saying, look, we need doctor's testimony. It seems to me like she was trying to, to bully you. The other question is, and I, and I don't know if I'm reading this right, isn't there a question as to whether or not this judge even has jurisdiction over Dr. Rivera? Because if this wasn't made part of the court order, it, don't we fall back to the same thing that the, the other judge did, where they tried they put him in prison when there was no court order, which means they wouldn't have jurisdiction over him? Well, that's the whole thing. If there's no enforceable order of child support, which there is not, and that's clear. That is very clear. There's no enforceable order of child support, but this judge thinks seems to think it is enforceable. But it, it's definitely, there were so many CSSA, Child Support Enforcement Act, violations in that uh, order of support. Even when the judge brought up in, in the courtroom, well, it's all in the um, child support worksheet, all the stuff that was missing. But we found out the child support worksheet was submitted much after the uh, stipulation. And Carlos never even saw the child support worksheet. It's only signed by his former wife, where the, the uh, stipulation says, see child support worksheet annexed to this agreement. It could not have been annexed. So... The, all, the, all the information that's required under the Child Support Standards Act to determine what the payor's uh, income is, payee's income, and do certain mathematical calculations. And then if you're going to deviate, explain why you're deviating, it's just not there. Unbelievable. And one of the things that we advocate for Americans for legal reform is for changing the system where judges don't have this absolute immunity where they can't be sued. But we've done a lot of research. And the one situation where the judge can get sued is if they're acting outside their jurisdiction. And if, the, if, there, if there is no valid court order, and you submitted that, and it's proven that there was no valid court order, this judge had no jurisdiction over it. You can go after this judge, from what I understand, because she had no jurisdiction over him. Is that, is, is, am I reading that correctly? The case law on it is, I'm not, um, I, you know, I haven't had a habit of suing judges, but I do know that the case law is that if there, the one instance where there is not judicial immunity, if, if a judge acted outside of their authority when they didn't have, have the authority. Well, I, I, I got to tell you, I hope that you prove it because from my read in the papers, this judge does not have authority. And you know what? I think she's playing with fire. And when you play with fire, you get burned. So thanks so much, Judy, for, for coming out today. Appreciate it. And we have some of Dr. Rivera's supporters here today. The whole side of the courtroom uh, with Dr. Rivera sat was filled with supporters. There's actually no more room. Of course, the courtroom was packed because for some reason they felt it was necessary to have six court officers here, which is another story. But uh, we have one of Dr. Uh, Rivera's supporters. And what is your name? Jolene Lipton. And what makes you uh, come out here today on a, during the week on a Monday morning at 9 o'clock, even though the judge didn't show up till 1030? A break from my twin toddlers and um, to support Dr. Rivera. He was their doctor. Um, he was actually their doctor when they were newborns, infants, and um, then he was incarcerated for the first time, and we lost him for quite some time. I just have a question. How, how does it feel when your children's pediatrician, who you love and took care of your children, how does it feel when, he's in, when you find out that he's going to jail? It was horrible because he was um, their second pediatrician at four weeks old, and he was very much, you know, there for me as, you know, a mother, a new new mother with not just one baby but two and and I like my I loved him, my mother loved him and I was very happy and I felt like I was in good hands and and he helped me with a lot of issues in the beginning with them, you know, they were constipated a lot and I, you know, as a breastfeeding mom and you know, he was just an excellent 
you know, go-to doctor and always there with a text, you can call, you know, he always replied. And then when I, you know, he went to jail, I went to a new pediatrician and she wasn't nowhere close to him, but we stayed there for a while. I found out he was back and we switched back and I was very happy. And now not only am I sad, but so are my, my children, they're sad. And we were regulars in his office. I have um, twin toddlers who have a fever disorder and every other doctor out there can't find out what's wrong with them and you know he's the only doctor that fought for my children. I'd be in his office sometimes three times a week, four times a week. He would come out on Saturdays you know just to see them when they were sick. And, and I know you're, you're not an attorney, I don't know if you've ever spent any time in the courtroom before, but sitting in the courtroom today, what do you feel about the way he was uh, treated uh, and his attorney was treated by the judge? I have spent time in the courtroom before, you know, family court as well, and you could tell she's against him, and she I feel she purposely comes out so late. Why is everybody else there at 9 o'clock and she comes in at 10.30 every time? You know, and, and I seen her twice back there. You know, once at 9:40, I looked at my phone and I seen her in the back when they opened the doors. So, you know, she, you know, she's pissed that he has, you know, a good support system out here. Great, great. Thanks so much for coming and, and continuing to support Dr. Rivera. Okay, we have another one of Dr. Rivera's supporters. And what is your name? My name is, is Valerie Ray Ray. And how do you know Dr. Rivera? Uh, long time pediatrician for my nieces. And what do you think about what, what's going on here in, in the system and what, what happened in court today? I think the system is broken again, for sure, sure, sure. Um, I think the judge definitely has an issue when it comes to Carla Los. I could not even call her a fair judge, judge if this is what she does to majority teeds of fathers. They take so much more and more away from fathers than needs to be. I've been on both sides of the fence. Fence. I've been, uh, you know, a child who was kept kept from her parent and a court system that just drained the wallets. Uh, she definitely, um, you know, according to what I witnessed today, uh, sitting there as a support porter for Carla Los. Um, Everything that was asked, she just had an attitude to about about. And the things, I mean, just in knowing when you could subpoena somebody doesn't mean that you'll know when they'll be able to come. I think it's just unnecessary expenses on Carlos, who just doesn't have the means and the gain gains. And with his, you know, a overall health and the effect on the children, I think this whole thing is really, really a sad story. Well, thanks for coming out and supporting him. I know Dr. Rivera appreciates it. And it, it, to me, it sends a message whether the judge clearly had an attitude and, and is out. I mean, you know, I don't think there's anybody sitting there that didn't recognize that, but you know what, at least... The way she looked at, at him, um, the way she kept badgering, you know, his, his lawyer, yeah, um, no matter what she said, said, you know, she was dismissing the same thing. I mean, let's not, let's not forget she hasn't heard the case yet. Exactly. There hasn't been testimony. And that is the saddest part. Paul. Because to me, he's a victim, and she's victimizing me even more. Absolutely. Absolutely. I totally agree with you, you in know, that. For everybody who came in here thinking that this is going to be fair, and hopefully we have a fair judge, I don't think anybody walked out thinking that, that this is a fair. To me, he's being railroaded. Oh, I think he's totally being railroaded. I think majority of his divorce and consequences to bring him here, here are all railroad road in him. Okay, and we have uh, another supporter here, and what is your name? Karen Sawyer. And uh, how do you know Dr. Rivera? Uh, he's been the pediatrician for both my daughter's four children. Uh, the one is twins, Serena, who's been with him at all of these, and right now uh, she's home because she can't even find a doctor who's willing to help her as much as he has with her children. Um, the they have two twins. They're now 14. They've had him since they were infants. They're severely autistic, and uh, I can see what she's going through. And uh, actually, he's been, with all the stress that this man is under, he's been in contact with her on the phone, trying to help her, trying to help her find other doctors and specialists who will be able to help. He's made calls. He's done so much for her. I've never seen a doctor in all my life, and I'm up there. I'm 69 now. I've never seen a doctor put so much time and effort into helping others. And uh, my older daughter, same thing with her children. But, I mean, he's there 24 hours a day, 24-7. Now, the man, um, he's not even practicing anymore, but he's helping her 
to try and find help. Uh, he just found another doctor for her that she's going to try and take my grandson to, who's um, becoming now um, aggressive uh, towards his sister, towards his mom. So uh, she's, you know, she's heartbroken. She couldn't be here for him, but I'll be here as I'll be here every time. Great. And what do you think about the way the, uh, the, the hearing went today? Do you think that the, the judge was open-minded and fair? No, I don't. Not at all. Now, I always had faith in the system. I always did. You know, it's like I'm American. It's a great system. And now it's broken down everything I've ever seen. I mean, she seems to be getting progressively worse. I mean, the way she treats him, it's just so obvious to anyone who's watching that she's on her side. I mean, he, he hasn't got a chance. He doesn't. With this judge, he hasn't got a chance. You know, and I'm just, I'm very disappointed in the system. I really am. You know, I'm going to start writing letters and making phone calls because this has got to stop. If this is the Supreme Court and this is, this is the end for you, you have, that's it. You're done. You, you know, and, and it's just, I feel bad. I mean, you know, I, I can't see why she's doing this. If she does this to everyone, I can see why there are so many people that, I mean, you know, you, you hear about people, it's like, oh, they're going to the bad divorce and all, and, you know, they, they commit suicide and all. Now I can understand why. Eventually, it's like, you know, you're beaten, you're down. How much more can you be beaten down? Right. It's done. It's finished. You know, it's just, it's heartbreaking. It really is. You know, you want, you want to just sit there and cry. And really, I mean, I'm sure the courts realize she's putting not only himself through this, his entire family. I mean, I see his sisters here. It's, it's breaking them, you know, apart. And his children, what does this do to the children? Whether they're here or they're not, they know what's going on. They know. And they'll certainly know if he's in jail again. They will. And to have a father in jail, that's, that's ridiculous. You know, I mean, he's a, doc he's a doctor, a man that I would be proud. You know, I was proud. Everyone's proud of their father. And then to have your father in jail, that what does that do? You know, I'm sure they go to school. The kids make fun of them. That's, you know, bullying and stuff. It's just putting the, it breaks up families completely. You know, it just breaks them down. I'm sure his children will never get over this. Great. Well, yeah. thanks so much for coming out to support Dr. Rivera. And uh, I see Dr. Rivera over here standing here, so we're just going to go up to him and ask him. Uh, we haven't had a chance to speak uh, uh, to, before you went into court. What do you think about uh, what happened today, Dr. Rivera? Um, yeah, I'm always, you spend so much time on eggshells. You know, I never know what's going to happen when I walk into this place. Um, so I'm concerned. I have to come back for another hearing. But uh, I, I, what I find interesting is that, you know, I have this hanging over my head. My life's been destroyed. I'm alienated from my kids, which is like the worst thing possible. And, uh, I don't know. It just seems like my ex continues to be um, rewarded for destroying my life. I don't know. I think every single person who receives a red light camera ticket should fight their ticket. Why? Because it's nothing but a cash grab and a cash cow. We've all been told that it's all about safety and there's no quotas. You prove that it's got nothing to do with safety and nothing, and it, it is quotas. Red light cameras are nothing more than a tax, plain and simple. Don't anybody ever tell you any different. The red light cameras are, uh, are, are a fraud. Long Island Backstory. Chief Correspondent Gary Jacobs is uncovering the truth on Long Island. The family court system. Red light cameras. Corruption in local politics. The heroin epidemic. Corrupt 
judges. At Long Island Backstory, we uncover the truth that the Cablevision news monopoly won't dare touch. We uncover the details you won't see on News 12 or in Newsday. We are local independent media at its best. Long Island Backstory, available on Public Access TV and on YouTube. They said a bottle was just a bottle. That no one would ever notice me. But I knew I could be more. That one day, I would make people smile. All over America, people are taking the National Radon Test. Have you? <laughs> you put me on the spot! Have you heard of radon? I've never, I never thought about it, I don't know. I think it's a secret killer or a silent killer. Poison gas that seeps into the house. That's one of the tests we did with the inspector before buying the home. Why worry about it? Why worry? Take the National Radon Test. True or false, radon is the second leading cause of lung cancer. True. I'd say false. No, it's true. I thought of cigarettes and then pollution. That's something new to me. Radon can penetrate a concrete block. It's false. False? False? It's true. I, I wouldn't know true. how they could protect you from that. It's scary. The Office of the Surgeon General recommends all homes be tested for radon. False? It's true. True? I should know about it because I worked in the hospital for many years. So it's bad. We should get our house tested. Sure, I'll call it. 1-800-SOS-RADON. How can you not call? 1-800-SOS-RADON. <laughs> R-A-D-O-N. <laughs> Think being a big brother means you always have to be a perfect role model? Nice. Think again. <laughs> to learn more about becoming a big brother or big sister, call 1-888-412-BIGS. When I have an asthma attack, I feel scared. Sometimes my parents have to take me to the hospital. I feel like a fish with no water. You know how to react to their asthma attacks. Here's how to prevent them. Call 1-866-NO-ATTACKS. Visit www.noattacks.org or call your doctor. Because even one attack is one too many. I'm one on Monkey Guy. The chance of being involved in a robbery is 1 in 757. The chances of being struck by lightning one in 750,000. Please fasten your seatbelts for unexpected turbulence. The chances of being a victim in an airline crash? One in 29 million. Hey, could I get some peanuts? The chances of being involved in a car crash are far greater than lightning strikes and plane crashes. And if you are texting while driving, your risk of crash increases 23 times. Now, I may be an unlucky guy, but I don't have to be part of that statistic, and neither do you. Drive responsibly. <laughs>